The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. This is Africa Diaspora Connect. Join us as we take the journey from the motherland to America. We share our experiences and learn from them. Here is our host, Kevadi Gaturu. Welcome, Africa Diaspora Connect. Uh, we are at Studio 21, the home of the Africa Diaspora Connect, and I am your host, uh, Kevadi Gaturu. Uh, today's show, Chrissy, we are going to talk about social media bullying. Yes, yeah, cyberbullying. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, I heard it's uh, taking its toll. Yeah, I did some research today. Apparently, it is since the pandemic. Uh-huh. Because uh, everyone's staying at home, it's gone up by about seventy percent. Seventy percent with the pandemic, man. Those yeah. are some scary numbers. Too many people sitting at home. Scary numbers. So I'm going to introduce my guest in a second. Before I do that, let me uh, pay some bills as well. This episode is brought to you by Acacia Grill. It's a Kenyan restaurant serving homestyle tasty meals in Worcester, Massachusetts. Started through dedication of family, resilience, passion to bring people together to enjoy homestyle tasty meals that are creatively and uniquely prepared with a touch of our Kenyan culture. When you visit Acacia Grill, you are assured of a delicious meal that is mm, carefully and uniquely prepared with the right amount of each ingredient to give you an unforgettable home style experience. Don't miss the Fish Friday special, sub- Samaki, with two choices of your sides there. Enjoy Fish, Samaki, Kila Friday, every Friday, come for fish. Meet them at uh, 01105 West Boylston Street in my home city of Worcester, Massachusetts. They are open on Tuesday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Order ahead of time and you'll be Get your meal as soon as you get there. Reach out to them at 774-243-1016. Website is acasiagrill.com. Penny Gitao, reach out to her. She will serve you and fill you. So, guys, if you don't already know, come on now. Subscribe, subscribe. 2,000, 2,000, social media, Facebook, YouTube. We are everywhere you walk and listen to your podcast. We need you guys. Our quest for 2,000 this July. Come on now. It's coming up. It's coming up. So... Social media bullying. Mm -hmm. Social media bullying. I have with me a fire crack, a fire starter. And let me tell you something. This lady takes no prisoners. I have had uh, 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 the the, the, the fortune, the misfortune. uh, You call it what you want to call it. I've seen Mm -hmm. on platforms. Let me tell you, she doesn't hold back. She will tell you like it is. She will keep you in your place and she will ruffle some feathers. And guess what? She takes no prisoners. No. Sasha, Sasha, Miss Sasha Africa. Come on now. Let's hope this one works. Welcome to the African Diaspora Connect all the way from Zanzibar, the home of the cloves, beautiful spices. Karibu, spicy Sasha. Thank you very much. Uh, My name is Rafin Bote, and I'm uh, glad that you guys are hosting me tonight all the way from Zanzibar. It's a pleasure. Oh man, and and you you picked the title today. You what you, you what did you call it? What you picked this title today? What, you, what did you call it? Social media what? Social media uh, cyber bullying. Cy- cyber sorry cyber bullying. So mm-hmm. before we yeah. get into that, let, let let me hold a second. I, I got some quotes I like to give you here, Miss Sasha. All right, all right, Chrissy. Let yeah. me let me read that screen. All right, never argue with an emotional person. All right, they will drain you. You will get angry, and you don't even know them. They are called energy vampires. Avoid yeah. them like. The pandemic. All right, hold on. I, I got some more. You know, this was in Swahili. Uh, hold on, I'm not done. Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ, help us. Those words out there. Let me ask you something, Sasha. Do you consider yourself a bully? Do you consider yourself a bully? Let me ask you that. I, d- I don't consider myself a bully because uh-huh. if I have if I have a problem with you, I'm going to tell you straight on your face whether you like it or not. Okay, okay, but 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 I mean, you know, aren't there other ways of uh, uh, communicating more effectively without unambia mtu ati ana paka kilonzima? I mean, I mean, come on now. I mean, that's kind of heavy. I mean, that's kind of heavy. I mean, it, it hurts my feelings. It wasn't me you're addressing. 
<laughs> yeah, it kind of, it, it's heavy, but I think uh, from my experience and everything that I went through, at some point, uh, I started reading all the, I go to those uh, blogs, uh, the Kenyan blogs, uh -huh. because our people are too busy. And at some point, I start laughing. And um, I think social media is not a place for very weak people. It's a place for people who are open-minded. So now, we, it, okay, go ahead. It's, it's not a place for weak people. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not a place for weak people. And then once uh, with time, when I was being attacked, uh, the way I thought about social media is not the same way that I think about it today in 2020 after everything we've been through through COVID. But I think um, in social media, you have to be very open minded and Kenyans, they can say anything. And I don't think uh, most of them mean it, but the problem is they don't know the kind of person that they're attacking. They don't know if this person is a weak person. You know, some people don't know how to handle life, you know? But, 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 but so, Sasha, but how come it's only you being attacked? Why is it it's you? Look, because I've heard, okay, fine. Uh, I hear all this place, you're thrown outside. I hear even Facebook has been able to cancel some of your stuff. Why you? So wait a minute. No, no, no. You're the common denominator here, Sasha. You tell me. They, 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 I mean, come on now. Where they smoke, there's fire. I think you may have an issue as well. What do you think? I, no, I don't think I have an issue. Yeah. I think uh, the way we were raised uh, through the indoctrination, uh -huh. we were we were we were we were put in some kind of a shell uh -huh. where you're not. We grew up, even you. I don't know how you grew up, but you know most people. And I'm not gonna say people. I I read some comments, and if it's a Kenyan complaining, a South African, a Nigerian, and then I realize it's a setup for the whole continent. It's a setup for black people. There is a way we were raised, and we were never allowed to express ourselves. You know. So, and I am from a different generation. I have um, my, my parents took me to school, and for us, we we we. We, we say uh, the eyes are useless when the mind is blind, you know? So I'm straightforward and people, especially people who are from the generation above me all the way to my great grandfather, right here. they were raised in that. Yeah, the, yes, from your generation. So that's, yeah, like when, when, I, when I was uh, in, in Samrak, I will say something and people will get offended and I will be kicked out. And then there are people who are like, no, you have to bring her back because she speaks the truth. You know, she doesn't sugarcoat. And then I'm taken back and then at some point I speak some more truth and then I'm, you know, it's it's like that. So it, I say it's uh, people are not used to truthful people and I, I do understand them now. But but now you say your, your generation were taken to school. We were taken to school. We didn't take ourselves to school. We were taken to school. You know, I, I, I went to a private school as well. I mean, I did all that stuff. So, I mean, we got the same benefits as you did. So I think this is an individual thing here, Sasha. This is an individual thing. Let me ask you this. Let, let me ask you this. I mean, uh, you, know, you know, cyber bullying, this whole concept of cyber bullying, or even just it's all about communication. It's, it starts with communication. And, and we all have different personalities. And, and, and some of us uh, are outspoken. I am outspoken. But I have a way of knowing when not to cross the line. Now, there are others who are outspoken and they honestly don't give two cents. They will say what they have to say and leave it there. Uh, let me ask you, does it ever get personal for you? Do you ever feel it's personal for you? Does it ever get to that level? No. No, for me, for me now, it's a, because uh, like I said, social media, people have not understood uh, social media. For me, I see social media like gambling now. Okay. Yeah, but when I was going through the cyber bullying at, at that point, I had not seen it broadly, you know? So, but now I see it, it's like a game. It's like a game. If you, if you go to social media and every, uh, if you take things personal, if, okay, actually, um, today I did a post where I said, um, Emotional intelligence is more than your IQ, the, the IQ. Uh huh. EI. Yeah, because on social media, a lot of people, and especially now during COVID, people are wounded, people are broke, people are hungry. Yeah. So people are angry. You understand? Yeah. So sometimes you can even just go to somebody's post. You say, "Wow, I like." Like recently, I told someone, "Wow, I love you. I love your your dogs are always clean." And she just asked me, "Why do you always uh, say?" that my dogs are always clean. So people project on you what they are going through. Wow. So w even when you were on an African diaspora podcast, people, people thought you were from Tanzania. So they, they thought you were bashing Kenyans. They thought you were this. They think you are, it's called misandry. They think you hate men. Like you, do you hate men? Just be honest. Do you hate men? Because we feel like you hate us. Why do you hate us? I don't hate men. What is it? 
I hate patriarchy. What, what, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean exactly? What do you mean by that? I, what I mean by that yeah. is that uh, we are in 2021 uh -huh. and we want equality for women. Okay. And when we speak about them, we are told that we are hateful. And I'm bold enough to speak about it because... I'm not going to speak about you. I'm not going to speak about myself. But most of us know that most of our fathers were only family portraits so that the society can say there was a father. But it is the mother who pays the school fees. It is the mother who knows when the children are going to go to when they are sick. It is the mother who knows when the kids are uh, 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 um, so, so have you... not gone to school. They don't have school fees. You understand? Most of this, uh, and, 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 I, and I feel so bad that most men, especially from my generation, are out here insulting single mothers while they saw their mother struggling with them. But I don't blame them. They have been they have been groomed like that since they were children because I saw it with my brother. He never used to clean. And it's not like he didn't want to clean. We are just thought since we are we are we are young, like men don't do this. So basically so I think they, I, I think you're you're a feminist. Is that what it is? You're a feminist. Would that would that be I a wouldn't, I wouldn't basically say that I am a feminist in uh, 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 the kind of the Western world. Uh-huh. But yes, as an African woman, I am tired of seeing African women being oppressed and I'm fighting for that and I will continue fighting about that and I will continue speaking about it. Right now, I cannot put the name patriarchy on Facebook. I put dots in between because the minute I put it the way it's supposed to be, Zuckerberg will give me straight 30 days in jail. 30 days. So, so this is what I say. Uh, Mau Mau was attacked. Uh -huh. Nelson was attacked. Okay. Obama was attacked. Uh -huh. Feminism is attacked. So it means that things are shifting. Okay, okay. If you say so. If you say so. Now let me ask you before I move to the next topic. Do you ever see yourself getting married? Do you ever see yourself uh, uh, meeting a nice man and maybe settling down? Do you, would you see yourself? Oh, yes. You? 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 Yes. How? How? Yes. How? I, How? Yeah. How? I grew up. Huh? I grew up. Now let me tell you one thing. People don't understand this. And this is something that I teach the girls that I'm training. Uh -huh. I tell I grew up with a father that was present. I grew up with a father that provided. And like these men who are on social media, they are insulting women for sending them bus fares. Our grandmothers were getting arms. You're insulting me because of 30 shillings that I can afford. You understand? But you know, a man, we, we, we do need a woman to be submissive. That is an area that's key and critical. Would you be submissive? Yes, but what am I submitting to? to abuse? No, no, not to abuse. To a man. To a man. Do you be submissive to him? I can be I can be submissive, but I'm asking you, what am I being submissive to? To your husband. Our, our graves are full of women who are defenseless. <laughs> Every day in Kenya, we have not even in Kenya, the whole world. It's no longer about Africa. It's about it's global right now. I check. I, there is a program I watch on um, on on my uh, my YouTube. Yeah. It's called. Uh, Fatal attraction. It's uh, in America. I watch those programs and I'm like, oh my god, all these women have been killed. Oh, come and on. we don't have we don't have laws in parliament that protect women and children. So you're standing up. So for, you're standing up for something. I'm stand, yes, I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna stand up until I am hard. But listen, then stop fighting. So if, if you can stay longer and be tactful, you can be, be more tactful. So you don't get kicked out of these things. Be tactful. Be heard without being kicked out. Think about that. Think about that. You heard it from me here, the Africa diaspora tonight. Let's move along here, Sasha. Let's talk about how you got started. Let's talk about what you went through and the bullying that got you to where you are. Tell us that story in all of our 90 seconds, two minutes. Tell us that story. No, the, bu the bullying did not get me to where I am. I was already there. Oh. Actually, I, I actually had enough followers. I was already out there. What I can say is that the, 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 the bullying uh -huh. boosted me. It boosted me. Okay, for those that don't know, tell us about, the bu tell, tell us about that episode. You tell us. What have the picture? Uh, it, it was just a normal picture, you know? And it was just a normal picture. And it wasn't normal. It, my... it, it wasn't a normal picture. Who, who, who was that picture with? It was with it was it was with an uh, with the, with the former prime minister of Kenya. Oh. It was not for me. It, was, it wasn't a big deal. I've met uh, Angelina Jolie. I've met. No, Brad but, 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 I've, but wait a minute. All but, of us. You heard. You, you we, we've heard it. It, it wasn't a big deal for me. It was just a picture, and I shared it the way I share with other people when I meet uh, big people uh -huh. or um, famous people. Let me just say famous people. You know. 
and I put it out there and then it was edited, a lot of trash was put on it and then they opened a Facebook, like I'm the one who is saying I did this and that and uh-huh. it was all over the media, you know? Yeah. And I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, what is happening, you know? So tell us and tell us the effect of that. Yeah, let us walk us through the effect of waking up and all of a sudden you're blown over the media. <laughs> Um, in, when I, when I, first of all, when, when my phones were off by the time this was happening, what, are they, so what, what, what I, were they accusing you of? What were you being accused of? What, what are women accused of? The uh, mothers you hate so much. No, what, what we know no, of stealing our money and, and, and going not, shopping. Not, no, 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 not stealing your money. You know what women are accused of. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. You tell me. I, 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 I just. I, I'm not going to say it. You, you, you have read the news. You know everything. So I was accused. I was called a slave queen, and you know what they mean with a slave queen? Yeah, right? a slave queen, absolutely. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. They called you a slave queen, and how? how yeah. Did, yeah. Yes, and they translated their own things, and they edited the pictures, and then for me, um, I just I was reading, and then I'm looking. I have death threats, insults, and everything. And in the beginning, I'm I'm not even understanding what is going on because there are also people from the diaspora. They put me in all this WhatsApp group. People are telling me, don't kill yourself. And I don't even know what they're talking about. Wow. Then I go to Facebook and then that's when I realize, oh my God. What was that? And people are sending me links from every other newspaper. I am all over the place. Wow. So that And that... I had to, yes, I just, I had to calm down. And then my small sisters called me and they were crying. They're like, people are insulting them back in Kenya. And I'm like, how is mom and dad? And they're like, they're going to call you. And my mom and dad took a day before they called me. And I kept on asking my sisters and they're like, they're going to call you. Believe me, I, 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 the minute my dad called me, my dad was like, uh, my dad is, re- he's, he's re- our parents are religious, you know, I'm no longer religious. I used to be because that's how I grew up, but I, I can see clearly, I can see through the lies. So I'm, I'm going to respect <laughs> that they are still religious. And my dad was like, oh, you know, Moses, he took them out of Israel, but they insulted him. He didn't even see the promised land. Who are you, my daughter? And then I'm like, how is my mom? And then he's like, talk to her. And my mom picks up the phone. And the first thing my mom tells me is like, thank you very much, my daughter, for showing the world that you're strong like me. Believe you me. If my mom and dad had denied me at that point, mm. I would not be alive today. Say that again. Say that one if more my, time. If Yeah. If my mom and dad would have denied me during that time, or if they would have, have just suspected like maybe I did this I wouldn't be alive today but the minute my mom and dad were like we know who you are we raised you we know what you can do we know you what you're not capable of I just told my friend was telling me every day let's go out and I was like no I just want to be in my own uh, moment and then after I spoke to my mom and dad I was asking my friend where are the party at let's go let's, let's go. go let's go and party where the party and at after that I didn't I didn't care what anybody else thinks you know, I like, I like what you said earlier. You know, uh, a lot of us think that's what made you. A lot of us think that's what gave you the limelight. I, didn't, I never got to know about you up no. until uh, that stuff was circulated. I didn't pay attention to it because I don't really give a crap about that kind of stuff. And I don't dwell on it. But I, yeah. did, I did hear about it. I did hear about it. But that was very irrelevant to me. But I like what you just said. That is not what made you. Tell us about how you made yourself and what it is exactly that you do for society. I think um, I think uh, trials made me. Okay. Yeah, trials made me. O- overcoming, overcoming I, trials and tribulations. Yes, exactly. When I when I first uh, started working in the spa industry, I was working in Kenya at the uh, at the South Coast at the Baba Beach Resort. Uh-huh. And the first week when I was there, I had an accident and I broke both of my legs, which was a very difficult time for two years. And then the company called me back when I I, I was um, I healed, but I was working with very very difficult women women who will go every day and try to crush me, tell my boss uh, things, and he used to listen to them. He would come and insult me, and sometimes I would be denied to do work so that I don't get because we had a salary and a commission. I went I went through it all mm-hmm. in that job. But I told myself, 
I'm going to thrive in this. This which they are using to put me down, I'm going to thrive in it. Mm. And after that job, I was taken by Sarova Hotels. I worked with the Sarova Hotels for a very short time. And I thank God for Sarova Hotels. And may God bless the Bora family. May the ones who passed away uh, with the accident, may God rest their souls in peace, especially um, the Bora. They were like a family. When you work at this, I, I was just a therapist, but they have this uh, school. They call it Sarovanization. You're mm. taken to every other department and they train you. So I went there as a therapist, but I came out of there as a manager. Ah, terrific. And when I got an opportunity, to, yeah, yeah, I got an opportunity to come and work in my first job in uh, Tanzania as a spa manager. And I worked there and I left and then I came back. And, it's, and it reached a point, and like every time I want to come back to Tanzania, my parents would be like, no, don't go back there. When I tell them, maybe I went through this trial or that, don't go there, la, la, la. I told them, it's yeah. not me. It's God who's telling me to go back. And Tanzania kept on pulling me and pulling me. And then when I was doing my first job in Zanzibar, I noticed that there are some young girls. Um, some of them are very, very young. Don't They don't have formal education. Yeah. And then I realized the government of Tanzania allows their people to work when they have skills. And like in Kenya, where you have to have certificates, diplomas, and I don't know what. And I just say, uh, because I, 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 I know what struggle is, because I know there's a time when I was in secondary school when my parents were struggling. So I, I, I know what struggle is. And I thought, if these young girls are this young and I want to help them, but they if they don't have the formal education, you can't even be able to help them, you know? So I started to train them how to, to uh, speak in English and then train them how to do spa jobs. And they are all over uh, in Tanzania working. I have some now who are working in Comoros and um, uh, 2018, I was in Zimbabwe and I met uh, with some members of parliament and we were planning to begin the same in Zimbabwe in 2020, but then unfortunately COVID came and everything was put on a halt. And I want to do this to all, all over Africa. There's a saying There's a saying you have on your website, something about giving back, something, something about, what's that saying with, you, with, the, with the girls? What's, there's, some, there's something about sharing, you know, play, paying forward. What, what's that saying you have? Um, I tell uh, uh, each girl, each one touch one e from yeah, your village. There we go. Say it again. Touch one what? Say that again. I think you're frozen. Slight technical difficulty there. S slowly, she, one second. She doesn't have a great connection, but hopefully she'll come back to us. All right, she'll be right back. All right, Zanzibari ADC. All right, I guess the communication in Zanzibar is a bit uh, behind. Uh, my brother's in uh, Bongo. Can you please uh, check your technical, yeah. Uh, you know? Yes, we Could need to... Could uh, everyone stop downloading yeah. for a minute so that we can talk to <laughs> Sasha, Seriously, please. right? Yeah, we want to something huge here. All right, <laughs> Ezekiel, <laughs> Pikasimu, <laughs> call your people to... Uh, yeah, Bukeye. Hey, man, call your people, man. You guys have no uh, connection. I'm on Wi-Fi, TZ, or do a Bongo. Oh, Are you back? she's back. Are you back? How do we lose her sound again? This and now, and now I can't hear you. <laughs> Hang on. She's muted herself. You, unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute yourself. Hello? Ah, there she is. I was, I was even enjoying my brothers from, from Bongo. I'm telling them to get Wi-Fi. Go buy some Wi-Fi. Yeah. I mean, this, this is embarrassing. You know, you keep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, there's, there's, I, I like the, the term. We're talking about that, that, that phrase. Uh, touch one, pay one. What do you say? Say that again. Say each each one touch one and i tell them each one touch one so i tell them if i train one of you you yeah. have to touch 10 girls from your village there we go powerful powerful the powerful yeah. so and and well we well, yeah. well, 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 we're on tanzania and tz and dar es salaam zanzibar i have a very senior executive executive friend of mine all right working for the uh, the bottlers out there the man was allowed to go back to work all right, he's a senior executive from Kenya who has a very senior post in Tanzania. Do you do you do you deal with that kind of stuff over there? Maybe can, can you be honest and tell me what's it like coming from Kenya to set shop in Tanzania? Be honest and be be cold like it is. Yes, I did. Uh, I actually I did a post. I did a post. Um, I did a post. We have this group called Wanderlust. Yeah. It's owned by some of my friends on social media. We, they, they are just have, uh, friends uh, on my Facebook. Uh -huh. But um, we we sell one another through business. Uh -huh. So I did a post, I think, when was it? I, I did a post last year. And because a lot of people were saying I was in Tanzania and they were complaining I was harassed. I did what and everything. Uh -huh. And through my African travel, first of all, the, the reason why I travel in Africa is because... 
I wanted to understand our politics. I wanted to understand why do we have all these resources and we have our people dying of hunger? Because mm -hmm. I've been to South Sudan and I saw what is happening there, you know. Uh, we all know... Um, all these big bodies from the world, uh, peacekeeping, they're not peacekeeping, they're taking, you know? Yeah, but Sasha, you're, missing my, you're, 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 you're missing my point. I wanted to know, is it, can a Kenyan work in Tanzania uh, without any problem? No, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. So I, wa I wanted to understand our politics as a continent. Yeah. That's why I travel in Africa, you know, before uh -huh. it was even a business. Yeah. So, and also when I came here, I know people are complaining in Tanzania, they don't like Kenyans, la la la, and everything. And I did a post in Wanderlust and I explained everything to them. Mm -hmm. I told them in Tanzania, when you come here, first of all, you have to ask the company that is employing you to get you a permit. If you don't get the permit, you're going to have a lot of problems with the immigration. If you're opening a business, the same, same thing. Go straight to the government offices, get the good documents that you need to get. Go and pay for those documents. You will never have a problem with anybody here. But come here and you try to... Uh, do fishy things, you're not going to suffer. Sasha, my, I... guy, my guy is a senior executive, the senior most person. He's got all the permits. Anyhow, story for another day. Let's go back to no, bully. No, no, no. no. Let, yeah. me tell, no, no, yeah. no let me tell you. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. The government of Tanzania, like when I was working as a manager, they protect their people. And actually, in the entire continent, I respect the government of Tanzania and how they do their things. The government of Tanzania fights for its people. So if you're coming here... And you're coming here as a manager. They give you a grace period of time. You have to start teaching their people so that when you leave, they are not taking another person from another place. It's someone from their country that is All getting right. their job. Okay. When you look at what is happening in our country, you're going to like their system. All right. If you say so, if you insist, I'll still beg to differ. Let's go back to bullying. What advice would you give to someone who's being bullied? How do they overcome that? What advice would you give them? Uh, first of all, especially for women, I would love to teach our women. Oh, I thank God for my mom and dad since I was a child. My mom and dad, up until now, they call me Mrembo. <laughs> okay, I can see that. If you were just better on, on, on social media, I think you'd be more pretty, as a matter of fact. <laughs> if you're better to us men, you'd be way, way prettier. But I can see that, Mrembo. And the Leo Mrembo. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is, um, um, I've, I've never had that urge to look for for someone to love me. Go back to my question. I'm going back to your question. Oh, okay. You understand? All right. So um, I'm, I'm saying um, these things, you see like what happened to me? Uh -huh. If I didn't have love from home, it your, could have broken me. Your parents, you said that, yep. Yes, so it is, it is um, also the way parents relate with their children. They have to set them to go there and... Um, meet the world and the world is cruel. Mm -hmm. So I think also from my upbringing and um, how my mom and dad have taught me to uh, deal with issues mm -hmm. also helped me a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you bully somebody who is emotionally weak, definitely that's why we are seeing a lot of issues. Oh, this girl, like the girl who killed herself the other day in South Africa, I'm so sorry about that. She was bullied in school mm -hmm. and they took a video and they put the video out there. And when she saw the video, she killed herself, you know? That, that, was, that was tragic. That was tragic. Yeah. And I know also myself, when I was in Form 2, I used to be like that. I wanted to kill myself, but I had a lot of malaria uh, queen uh, tablets that I had put somewhere, but my mom saw them before I drank them, you know? So if someone is emotionally weak, social media, I tell my sisters, I tell my sisters, because nowadays in social media, like I said, you can just say hello and you trigger someone. Africans, uh, black people, we have a lot of trauma in mm. us. Okay. So if you know you're not, I tell people, if you know you're not uh, that strong, don't do politics, don't do the, the post that I do about society, about uh, pedophilia, about uh, the Bible, about religion, about, uh, you know, don't do those things. Just post your nice pictures and your short stories. But don't deal with anything, especially that uh, affects the global world, because you're dealing with a lot of people. Some have trauma. Some don't even know themselves. They will come and attack you. You know what? Talking to you, and I'll be honest with you, this is not what I expected. You actually come across as very calm, as a matter of fact. You honestly do. You're not the person that I see posting. You sound like a totally different person. You know what I'm saying? Do us a favor. Like I said, I think you have a lot to offer, Sasha. And I mean this from a very good place. You have a lot to offer. 
do what you do, push back, stand your ground, do what you need to do, but don't give anyone any element to have you to get kicked out. Honestly, you have a lot to offer. You have a lot to bring, a lot to bring to the table. And I do pay attention. I may not say much, uh, but if you could work on that element, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you what to do because you won't listen to me. But if you ever will ever, ever have an, an, a strong impact, find a way just to keep staying on those forums, wherever it is that you are, and keep doing what you do, but always have an area, a little boundary where, you know what, she's making sense, bazoo. That's all I got to say. Listen, this is amazing. I would love to have more of this with you. It's after midnight at your time, and you're here, and you're giving it to us. This is Sasha coming in, and she's not, she is not honestly. I say, I, I, may, I may stand corrected. You know what I'm saying? You have a lot to offer. Africa Diaspora Connect, you heard it. This cyber bullying is a traumatic thing. 70% increase in the population out there. Sasha, before we leave, Parting shot, what would you like to say? What would you like to tell my, my viewers, my subscribers at the Africa Diaspora Connect? Anything you'd like to tell them? Yes, I just want to tell uh, people out there, right now, um, I, I like what you're saying. A friend of mine also told me, she told me, I don't want you out because I learn a lot from you. There we go. So, and then also this is a journey because also at some point I was doing a lot of politics and uh -huh. with politics you have to be aggressive and yeah. I've dropped that. So. Right now, I'm working on a spiritual journey. I'm ah. working on healing people with the spiritually. Okay. You mentioned about the feathers. I'm still learning. Uh -huh. And as I, as I continue with my spiritual journey, I want the rest of my remaining days on this earth to be very, very peaceful. So even on my social media, since COVID came, because there was a lot of conflict when COVID came, uh -huh. and I realized uh, a lot of people were coming to my page. It was like a dumping site. People are fighting on comments, and I was encouraging that. And I reached <laughs> to a point where I was like, no, it's not even giving me peace. So <laughs> I now even choose topics to deal with, you know? You are going to be one hell of a philanthropist. I know that's your end game, and I'll tell you this. You have a lot to offer society, my sister, and I'll call you Mrembo. Uh, one last question. Are you from Nyeri? Are you from Nyeri? Eh? Ah, that says it all right there. That is it right there. Africa Diaspora Connect. We are loving it. My Nyeri sister right here says it all. We love you. We want you on the forums. Stay in touch, all right? My sister, she's right there. Sarah Sarafin Wabui, right there. Wabute. Asante sana. Sayonara. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.